<coughs> so if you write some source code like this I just uh, some source code like you know uh, you write say int a equal to 100 so what does a lexical analyzer do it try to detect detect each small part this is one small part this is another, this is another, this is another, and this is another. So each small part of your source code, it try to detect that what is it, okay? When it find, okay, it is int, it has to say, okay, int is a keyword. Then it can understand that it is defining data type. Okay, so what kind of data type, it is integer, uh, and all these things, right? A, when it finds A, it try to, or uh, it can, you uh, know, analyze that this A is an identifier. Why identifier? It is identifying something, right? A variable. So it is the name of a variable, or that means by name it is identifying it. Okay, so uh, like this it works. So let's see what uh, oh, you know in detail how lexical analysis works. So the role of lexical analyzer. The lexical analyzer is to read the input characters of a source program, group them into lexem. So what it is saying that it read input character, but understand so. Uh, your lexical analyzer will read the input character by character like we read the, uh, some english sentence uh, character by character it will read and it will try to group them into lexemes okay like you know say you have given i a n t so le lexical analyzer will read i at a time n at a time and t at a time then it try to group them together i and t together and try to uh, understand what is it okay <coughs> and produces as output a sequence of tokens for each lexem in the source program so it try to generate some output as a sequence no a sequence of tokens okay i have told you what is token okay so for each you know, uh, string or each each lexem detected by lexical analyzer. The lexical analyzer try to generate a sequence of tokens for each lexem in the source program. I think it is understand, right? You understand it, right? So, the stream of token is sent to the parser for syntax analysis. So we know that. Uh, Parser, this is the second phrase. This is the second phase of compiler. So it needs the output from lexical analyzer. Okay. So lexical analyzer sends this token as you know, it is so these tokens are output from the lexical analyzer, which are Feeded to the parser, okay, for syntax analysis. This is the another thing. Then, <coughs> then uh, it is common for all the lexical analyzer to interact with the symbol table as well. So it is common for lexical analyzer to interact with the syntax. A simple table as well as I had told you that you know most of the phases of the compiler mainly the first six phases must communicate and they need to communicate with symbol table and what symbol, what is symbol table I had told you that when lexical analyzer generates some token so what happens one copy of the token is sent to the parser another copy of the token is sent detail the detail of the token is put it uh, into the symbol table so that you know other uh, pages of the compiler if they need to uh, have the detail of token they can go to the symbol table and they can find it out so symbol table is nothing but you can say 
it is a kind of uh, uh, database okay <clears throat> when the lexical analyzer discovers a lexeme constituting an identifier it need to enter the lexeme into the symbol table understand so when uh, the lexical analyzer finds some new lexeme so it uh, need to put it into symbol table like say you have a you know four line of code a very simple code first line you have written something like like int a int a then again another line you have a equal to 100 then again another line you have say a equal to a plus one okay so this a will be detected by your lexical analyzer how many times four times in four places so your lexical analyzer will insert the detail of a that is you know the entry for a in the symbol table once when it is detected for the first time for other times if there is some attribute needed to be updated that can be updated but uh, it will not enter you know, multiple times for the same symbol okay for the same lexeme okay in some cases information regarding the kind of identifier may be read from the symbol table by the lexical analyzer to assist it in the determining the proper token it must pass to the parser okay so sometimes uh, you know um, that uh, lexical analyzer may read uh, this thing the kind of identifier it is okay the kind of identifier may be read from the symbol table by the lexical analyzer so you can say the you know, communication between the lexical analyzer and the symbol table is a bidirectional communication okay now here if you see hmm, this is the way interaction between the lexical analyzer and the parser. Uh, so you write the source code here. So you, you say you have source code which is a you know dot c file. You know for the discussion, we're assuming it can be dot java dot py, py or whatever. Okay, it goes to the lexical analyzer. Lexical analyzer, what it does, you see. The here's something you must uh, notice very carefully the lexical analyzer uh, the basic thing we know it will read this file character by character and try to generate around you know create the lexeme now after this uh, it generate a lexeme it uh, generates a token from that lexeme okay and for that thing it you know this token is stored into the symbol table as well okay no, sorry hmm. the token is stored in the symbol table as well and if you see here this di direction of this arrow here and here it is you know, bidirectional that means sometimes this lexical analyzer you know, sends data to symbol tables and sometimes the lexical analyzer retrieve data from the symbol table okay that is the reason it is a bidirectional uh, arrow is given now here if you see the communication between the lexical analyzer and uh, parser so you can see here still now we was uh, discussing that uh, lexical analyzer generates the token and send it to uh, parser but here you can see the another communication line is here from parser to lexical analyzer which i just made fully read so and it is called get next token so <laughs> parser will not take all the token at a time okay because you know this parser is going to generate uh, this output is basically a syntax type sorry syntax tree okay and more special uh, and specifically you can say a parse tree 
okay mainly it is a parse tree so for generating the parse tree the parser parser will request one token at a time okay and how this request is sent to the you know lexical analyzer parser will have a function like uh, you know uh, usually we call this function as uh, get next token so in some uh, uh, different compiler uh, this uh, function may function name can be a little bit different that is not an issue so parser sends a request to lexical analyzer that get next token so when lexical analyzer gets that uh, request from the through this function lexical analyzer sends a new token or next token to the parser okay so this is the communication you have to understand uh, it is quite important okay because parser does not have memory to get all the token at a time and to store uh, lexical analyzer can send a sequence of token you know uh, at a time to the parser it doesn't happen okay and another thing you can see here the parser and the communication between the parser and the symbol table it is also bidirectional uh, communication so you will find the symbol table is something very important but we are speaking less about it okay so all the phases all the upcoming phases of the compiler are going to communicate with the symbol table okay mm. so other tasks uh, our uh, lexical analyzer does is stripping out comments and white space okay that means uh, the blank new line tab you know so you understand one thing when is a white space in our last class also we uh, we, uh, we was counting white spaces in uh, in your input okay so white space means here blank a new line a tab and perhaps other character that are used to separate tokens in the input okay so <laughs> any uh, no unnecessary characters which are just used to i can say uh, give a, a proper shape of your source code so that we uh, human being uh, the programmers can understand the code so those things are going to be uh, deleted or removed by the uh, lexical analyzer itself okay <coughs> then uh, there is uh, another thing correlating error message generated by compiler with source program so this is very interesting uh, when you see that uh, when you get some error message when you compile some uh, program you will find that it is writing uh, line number uh, line number 10 some you know error say array out of bound or undefined uh, parameter or undefined variable name uh, a okay undefined a So undefined A. So this, uh, how your compiler understand that this undefined A is on line number ten. So this correlation. So this uh, A is undefined. So uh, it is supposed to be detected by your parser, not by your uh, lexical analyzer. Okay. So this error is something is going to be triggered by parser. Okay, because when it will try to generate parse tree, it will not find, you know, something like int a. So it will not find this, uh, you know, value for one of the child. So this parser will say, you know, trigger this error, and this error will come to the lexical analyzer. You know, and lexical analyzer have a tasks to correlate that, you know, on which line this a was appeared first time. There itself it must have you know declared with its uh, data type. Okay, so it finds that and correlate uh, these such things and uh, gives a proper error, you know, error message which we can understand properly. Okay, and we immediately can go to that line or that particular portion of the code and we can check out. Otherwise, you can you may have understand if this this is not there. And only error is thrown by the compiler. It is very hard for us if you have, you know, uh, 200 line of code. Even it is very hard to uh, search uh, manually over. 
where exactly that error is correct <coughs> then divided into two process uh, you know that uh, lexical analyzer okay lexical analyzer the task of the lexical analyzer or how it uh, work the process you know the working process is basically divided into two parts one part is called scanning so in a number of times you will find that lexical analyzer is also called as scanner but uh, it is uh, neither uh, correct to call only scanner or only uh, it does lexical analysis but it have both the process it have scanning process it has lexical analysis process so what uh, the scanning does it consists of simple process that do not require the tokenization of the input such as you know so it uh, do not require the tokenization of the input okay and such as deletion of comment and um, compacting of the consecutive white space like it happens many times we write you know int then white space white space white space a semicolon so it is not a error in uh, c right why reason is that your lexical analysis will compress all these multiple white spaces to single white space so all this instruction will be converted automatically to int a semicolon okay because the extra white, white spaces are going to be deleted but yeah the scanner the scanning process does not do it the scanning process uh, the task is just scan the input one by one and check that each of the symbol written in the source code are valid like you know in your c source code you cannot uh, put many of the uh, what can i say special characters right so scanner when scanner is scanning or going you know, going through it is kind of reading char uh, character by character symbol by symbol okay the scanner can detect this kind of error okay uh, so it is mainly do does this um, basically reading the input okay a lexical analysis is uh proper is is the more complex uh, portion of the lexical anal you know, uh, analysis phase where the scanner produces the sequence of token as the output so <coughs> in the lexical analysis part it generates the sequence of tokens as output okay then lexical analysis versus parsing so numbers of times uh, you know because uh, people get confused uh, this uh, even this uh, questions comes sometimes i even i don't uh, like this question uh, to ask uh, you know <coughs> lexical analysis versus parsing but uh, still okay why this analysis portion portion of a compiler is normally separated into lexical analysis and parsing this is quite an interesting question huh? <coughs> so numbers of times uh, you may be asked that why the analysis phase is divided into two parts lexical analysis and parsing or syntax analysis correct so why not uh, all these two you know, phases can be merged together and if we merge then what will be our benefit or what will be the drawbacks okay <laughs> so that uh, that is something quite interesting to know okay the simplicity to design the most important consideration okay so yeah first thing is why they are separate because we want simplicity in our design okay if you just uh, separate the phases you know then you get uh, simplicity you know that a particular task i have to do, uh, do in the lexical analysis this particular task i have to do in the parsing okay the separation of lexical analysis and syntax analysis phase is uh, analysis often allow us to simplify at least one of these tasks okay so if we are designing new language separating lexical and syntax uh, uh, and uh, syntactic constant can be lead to a clear overall language design so if you would need you know numbers of times uh, people think that why do we need to design a new language but uh, 
you will find when you will uh, enter in uh, you know in our in your professional life uh, you, know, you will work in uh, different companies we find that uh, many companies are having their own language small you uh, know mainly if you go for you know, small it based uh, you know who IoT based companies, that means which companies generate this IoT devices, very small IoT devices like sensor devices they produce. Okay, but because you know, say so they are writing code, source code for a sensor device, how these devices work, they don't need very complex and many instructions to write. They need a very small programming language which uh, need to have very few keywords. Okay, so why they will use complex programming languages? Okay, instead they design some small programming language and use them for their particular you know devices and program their devices. Okay, so like that there is a many reason to have a, you know particular or a small or a separate programming language. For a particular problem, okay. So there is a reason. <coughs> now, com compiler efficiency is important. So a separate lexical analyzer allows us to apply specialized technique that serve only the lexical tasks, not the job of person. Okay. In addition, specialized buffering techniques for reading. Input characters can speed up the compiler significantly. Okay, so if you have a, you know, specialized buffering technique, uh, you will later you will find that this buffering technique uh, concept is there with the lexical analysis. So, uh, you know, uh, in the previous slide you have seen that the token is supplied to the parser from the lexical analysis based on request. When lexical analysis sends the request. It uh, send me a new token, uh, then only it uh, send a new token, right? But uh, when it is not getting a request, what uh, the lexical analyzer do? Lexical analyzer, you know, in the background, keep reading the input symbols and put them in buffer. Okay. So you can uh, you can understand that uh, lexical analyzer in you know, the background always become ready to give a. Immediate reply or immediate uh, reply with a new token, you know, to the uh, parser. Compiler portability is enhanced. So input device specific uh, uh, particularities uh, can be restricted to the lexical analyzer. Right? Uh, understand? So because uh, the input device can be different in different places, so a different system, you can say. Now, if you want to have in such situation, you need to modify only the lexical analysis analysis part. You don't need to, you know, make any change in the other phases of the compiler. So that, that is another good thing. Why we need to keep them separate? Now, yes, this is another thing I was uh, telling you, you know, many times that these three things are different. We need to understand it and we need to remember it, it, it all. Uh, most important is you will find people are using these terms, mainly token and this lexeme. These two terms very frequently, alternatively. Okay, in place of token, we are speaking lexeme. In place of lexeme, uh, we are speaking uh, it is token. You know, even uh, I have also done at the beginning of this class. I had to say token in a very particular way, but I said, uh, sorry, I had to say it is lexeme. I to, I told it is token. So I think um, some of you may have noticed that, or may not. But I uh, definitely uh, I know what I have told you. So basically, numbers of times uh, in generally when you speaking, okay, uh, they that uh, in general speaking we use them interchangeably or you know alternatively but they are not exactly alternative to each other there is different between them so a token name plus an optional attribute value <coughs> is called token so 
<coughs> when you are speaking about token it must have a token name and then an optional attribute of it okay the token name is an abstract symbol representing a kind of lexical unit okay so like particular a particular keyword or sequence of int character denoting an identifier can be called as token name hmm? so you can understand the token names are the input symbol that the parser processes okay so token names are for identifiers keywords number uh, symbol or some operator like plus minus and all this now when is pattern what is, what is pattern so a pattern is description of the form that the lexemes of a token may take understand so pattern is what it is the pattern of the uh, pattern of the lexeme okay because the lexeme is going to generate the token so what kind of uh, on a pattern can a lexeme have now if you think about variable name Uh, of uh, c variables then what is the pattern of them there is pa the pattern can be defined like uh, the variable name can start with uh, it can start with uh, alphabets right or small a to small z it can start with capital a to capital z or it can start with underscore so this is pattern Uh, this just you know like this we can describe okay <laughs> now another point can be added to the description or pattern of the lexem for c variable names that can be that uh, after starting with uh, these uh, uh, these symbols it can have uh, some digit also 0 to 9 it uh, repetition of 0 to 9 can be there so this is what called pattern okay so in the case of keyword as a token the pattern is just a sequence of character that form the keyword you understand so for keyword you don't uh, basically need to write this kind of detailed description of pattern because keyword keywords are pretty fine so the sequence of characters uh, which are uh, basically already defined so they are key they, that is the reason they are called as keyword so this sequence is a reserved okay so for identifiers and some other tokens the pattern is a more complex structure that is matched by many strings i think you understand <coughs> then lexem a lexem is sequence of character in the source program that matches the pattern of a token Understand? So how we will understand that? Uh, say you have you got something like int initial. Okay. So how we will understand that uh, which is keyword and which is uh, identifier? So using the description of pattern, you can understand it. Int is the keyword. and initial is a identifier because initial is something uh, will not uh, match the pattern of keyword so if it is valid but not matching the pattern of keyword then definitely it is an identifier so that logic will be used and it will be you uh, know identified as a different kind of lexemes now here you can see pattern and lexem some example uh, you can see a token if so informal description the like the scanner will read what i and f right so sample lexem will be this is sample lexem okay will be i f f like token else scanner will read e l s e separately and it will give uh, sample lexem as mm, else right that mm, comparison operators all these are comparison operators okay and uh, sample can be like this less than equal to not equal to okay then id letters followed by letters and digit 
what I was telling you, like PI, score, D2, okay? So these are patterns, are sample exam, sorry, these are sample exam, and these are description, okay? Then number, many numeric uh, constraints can come here, uh, con constraints can come here, like, you know, 3.14159, uh, 0, then 6.02, and uh, any form, okay? Then, literals are there, anything but, you know, like, uh, double quote, uh, double quote rest of is A's. So, you can understand, so these uh, things also be used in C programming, right? Now, if you look at this, a C statement, print F, total equal to percent D, new line, then comma score, and semicolon. So, this is a simple instruction in C language. Okay, so both printf and score are lexems matching the pattern for token ID. And total, you know, if you see this, uh, total equal to person D new line is lexem matching a literal. Okay, <clears throat> so covering most of the uh, most of the tokens are. Now, one token for each keyword, okay? So, the pattern for uh, keyword is the same as the keyword itself. I was telling you this thing because uh, for keyword, it is, we don't write uh, some different pattern. It is not possible, right? The result thing, so the keyword itself is, is the pattern for the keyword, okay? Tokens for uh, operators, either individually, or in classes, it can be defined, okay? Uh, or, you know, because uh, <coughs> uh, individually it can be minus, plus, mm, multiplication, all these things, then it can have uh, something less than equal to, it can have something not equal to, this kind of operators can be there, okay? Then, <coughs> one token representing all identifiers, there should be one token, uh, there can be one token uh, for representing all the identifiers. One or more tokens representing constants such as numbers, literals, and strings. And tokens for each punctuation symbol such as left and right parentheses, comma, semicolon, all these uh, can be generated. Okay. Then uh, you can see there is different types, uh, you know, keyword, operator, identifier, number, symbol. So this slide is very important. Why? Because numbers of times the question comes like, uh, uh, you know, something given uh, like this. Uh, consider the given uh, instruction in C or source code in C. Count equal to zero. Uh, how many tokens are there? Okay, so you have to count how many tokens are there. Okay, so here you have one, two, three, four, five. You have total five tokens here. When more than one lexem can match a pattern, the lexical analyzer must provide a subsequent compiler phases, additional information about the particular lexeme that matched. I understand, this is quite a, you know, word thing that uh, when more than one lexeme, you are finding more than one lexemes, okay, uh, can match uh, patterns. So, uh, more than one lexeme are matching a particular single pattern. The lexical analyzer must provide some subsequent compiler phases, additional information about the particular lexeme that matched. So it is very important. But that means the uh, uh, reason is both the lexeme can be same, and uh, both the lexeme may have a different uh, reason because they are uh, matching same pattern. So uh, you can understand the two different variable name can match uh, some pattern. Okay, so why is that reason just, uh, you know, why, how they are different or how they are similar, that need to be analyzed by the lexical analyzer for the other phases of the uh, compiler. For example, the pattern for token number matches 
both zero and one but it is extremely important for code generator to know which lexeme was found in the source program okay now thus in many cases lexical analyzer written to the parser not only a token name but attribute value that describes the lexeme uh, represented by the token so <laughs> basically uh, you know it is important uh, and we will see that uh, in uh, standard format uh, lexical analyzer sends the id um, index like you know in last class i have shown you id one so it sends the type whether it is identifier or not and uh, in the symbol table at which index it is there okay so this is another way that uh, how this kind of uh, computation can be resolved okay now token name influences the parsing decision you can understand this uh, this uh, you know this to this is just a token okay when it goes to the parser parser goes to symbol table and find what is the token name and uh, use the token name to generate uh, the tree or complete the tree or complete the parse tree okay so this parsing decision uh, highly depends on the basically uh, token names Okay, while the attribute value influences the trans translation of the token after the parse. So tokens have at most one associated attribute. Okay, that uh, no, uh, yeah. So although these attributes may have a structure that combines several pieces of information, normally information about identifier like its lexeme. its type and the location that is i have already told you all these things are available in the symbol table okay at which it is at which it is first found is kept in the symbol table okay so we know it so does the appropriate attribute value for the identifier is a pointer to the symbol table entry and for the and for that particular identifier 